Let's start with you providing, you know, an overview or assessment of the climate condition and the peculiarity of the investment climate in Nigeria and by extension the African continent. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I would start by say, for instance, asking why Nigeria? Why would anybody want to invest in Nigeria? So we ask or we consider things like, is it Nigeria that is, is it a fantastic place to live and work? Probably not. Somebody would say off rip. But when you look at it economically, Nigeria, yeah, is tough, but Nigeria is highly, highly profitable. Look at some of the value adds, look at some of the benefits. The market itself speaks for itself. Look at, for instance, the labor is cheap by and large. Okay, we can argue and say that the labor may not necessarily be competent in all areas, but in IT, we're one of the best on earth at the end of the day. So there are some of those pool attractive factors. So broadly speaking, the climate, I think of things like ease of entry, one, ease of doing business in the country, two, the mindset that we have in the country, service orientation as a matter of fact, particularly in things like tourism, we're a little bit weak as much of I'm being really nice and generous. We're extremely weak. And your last speaker talked a lot about the infrastructure needs. So broadly speaking, there are also issues of trusts which links to corruption, which links to government bureaucracy, government policies which are certainly un uncertain. Look at the importation and exportation costs. Nigeria is not attractive compared to our West African neighbors. We are eight to nine times more expensive if you're importing or exporting. How is that? Why is that? Yeah, we have the market. Yeah, we have some of the infrastructure, all with limited, huge improvement needed in a lot of infrastructure areas. We know that, we understand that. But that's where FDIs could come in. And at the same time, therefore, we need to identify the right areas that we would focus on in attracting people. So broadly speaking, Ease of entry, ease of doing business, uh, trust issues, uh, service orientation, mindset of our people and employees, and getting some of our people to be competent with government also playing their role and having, if you like, encouraging attractive policies. All right, looking at the statistics released by NBS in 2022, you know, um, Nigeria investment mm -hmm. accounted for 33% of its nominal GDP. Will you consider this to be fair enough or compared to the potential that Nigeria has? Oh, no. Well, it's good that we have such a percentage, but we've not scratched the surface. No. By no, 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 no. Look at, for instance, some of the areas, the agro allied industries and the agro processing. You could have FDIs in literally, if you're trying to be conservative, 200 different areas, and each will be reasonable, sizable. Look at mining. Look at the way we are conducting mining today, solid minerals, as an example is in no disrespect to anybody, it's abysmal. We definitely need improvements in those areas. Of course, there are infrastructural needs, water, electricity, transportation, logistics, supply chain, those kind of areas. Yeah, of course, we need to improve them. FDRs could come in also and improve us, help us improve them. It's sometimes difficult. One key core area that we have been neglecting is the telecom area. We, we don't seem to have landlines. Do we understand the implication of that? When you don't have landlines, you're, 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 you're depending on mobile technology. <laughs> you can't run a nation on mobile technologies. You need landlines as an example. We can go on and on and on, but yeah, definitely there are certainly easy win, quick win areas that we can kind of make it attractive for an FDI to come. Capital importation. Look at the difficulty in capital importation. Of course, we have the CCI, but look at the forex situation we find ourselves in. So when I come in with my 
a capital at the government rate uh, and I come and I engage and I add value to the nation. I have my profits, the tax, and I'm going to repatriate that which I was promised. I cannot repatriate it. That's not attractive. That's not a conducive environment and climate. So yes, there's a huge, huge swathe of areas that we can certainly take advantage of. All right. At an international forum recently, the president said Nigeria is open for business. So it's all about who wants to do business mm -hmm. with Nigeria. Do you think this statement is something to go by and is going to bring a game changer this time around? I totally agree with that. It was exciting to hear that. It was really encouraging. It was really uplifting to hear the president himself making such pronouncements. We sincerely hope and sincerely believe that they will follow through in policies, in the environment, making them more certain, making them more attractive, like the ex for instance, Nigeria is more expensive to import and or export, like I say, eight to nine times compared to Ghana. Togo around the corner, Cameroon. Why are we so expensive? They say, oh, it's revenue. Of course, it's revenue, but it's a numbers game. What you do is reduce your cost fourfold, but increase the output also fourfold. You make three times more money than if you're charging higher. It's simple marketing. When you reduce costs down by 30%, 35%, 40%, and you increase output by same kind of like percentages or more, you find that you make four times more money. So why are we being penny-wise and saying, for instance, we're charging this much and say, oh, it's government revenue areas. Of course, it's government revenue areas, but it's a numbers game. So yeah, we were very, very happy to hear what the president said. Like America, for instance, we don't have ideas coming from America. We need to tap into that market. Most of the ideas coming out of the UK, Germany, European countries, of course, China, Singapore, UAE, and such related economies. But we need to attract literally everybody. What is happening to the South American countries? Brazil, Argentina, for instance. We need to tap into them. Do you know what is happening in the first instance? agro allied processing in Brazil and Argentina? Or in simple things like, for instance, soya bean farming? Okay, we're great at it, but we can always improve. So there are things that we need to do in order to open up more for business. And we were very happy when we heard the president saying that, yeah, yeah, these are things that he is going to be focusing on. The government will be looking at. They should focus on getting us to be more attractive to, to, to deal with security-related type issues and to deal with the uncertainty of government bureaucracy, government decision-making. All right. For international investors who are looking at critical sectors to invest in, uh, I would like you to take us through or talk to us some of the critical sectors that should be of interest to international investors and even for the federal government to be able to market for international investors. What are these critical sectors and what are their peculiarities and the potential? Easy win areas the agro allied, oh, whew, whew. so many, so many, very, very much easy win. You come in within two, three years, you will definitely have rooted yourself and got into it. Okay, oil and gas are more difficult, more expensive. Telecom, sometimes when you have land lines, they are more difficult, more expensive, more medium to long term. But when you think, for instance, like I say, the vast area of agro allied, easy win. Solid minerals, very, very easy win. Extremely easy win in solid minerals. Most of our minerals, for instance, is just scoop and take. No much hassle needed. All you need is a grader or an excavator and a vehicle, a truck. You scoop, put it in. Lithium, easy win areas. There are more difficult areas if you want to go to gold and whatnot. Yeah, we understand that coal, easy win areas. They don't need much. They don't need to uh, for us to reinvent the wheel. At the end of the day, electricity, what's the big deal? 
don't reinvent the wheel. Just plug and play. These are easy areas. Water supply. Do you understand that we don't have sewers in this country? Only Abuja seem to have sewers. So our sewage, how do we process it? How would sewage on the street encourage tourism, for instance? Tourism is high.